Hey guys, it's Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again with a layout update for March of 2024. So, <laughs> this video I'm going to say has been quite a challenge to make due to problems I've been having, mainly with my dog barking. So, <sighs> love her, but don't really like her right now. <laughs> so, but anyways, I went ahead and finally got around to filming. And I've got a lot to show you because there were a couple of train shows that were happening this month. And some eBay hauls that have come in. Some scenery work. Some DCC work to the layout. And a few other things. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything and just dive right in. So the first thing new to come in this past month were these new Scale Trains Operator Amazon containers. Uh, these were... Uh, pre-ordered I believe at the end of February and they sold out immediately so I'm very glad I got what I did I wish I could have got more of them but I only could afford four of them so that's what I got these were really really cool to get and uh, they did a really good job on the printing on them as well they look really great I'll take them out of the packaging and show you here so detail wise being an operator product they're not gonna have the most detail on them but they are still really good. There's the uh, back door right there. And they're all individually numbered, which is nice. Some warning placards. Amazon Prime logo. Your typical 53 foot CMIC container. But it looks really nice. They all look nice, and they're going to look really good in my stack train consist. And there's the rest of them out of the box. They look pretty good. Really happy with these. So, another really fine product from Scale Trains. I also picked up these 48-foot uh, Pacer stack train containers. These are Intermountain ones from Mike Ray. So, thanks to Mike for selling me those. Those are really neat. So starting off with train show finds, uh, first thing I found was this Hallmark Models uh, Santa Fe U30CG, and this is really neat. Uh, this is one of my one of those oddball locomotives that I've really liked. So there, I believe there were only five or six of them built for the Santa Fe in total for passenger service in the '60s, but it's basically a U30C with a streamlined body and a steam generator on board. So, but this one's unique because it has a frame and motor from a Jane Manufacturing on it, which is the same company that made Overland Models drives. So it's much smoother of a runner compared to the Overland one. I mean, or rather compared to the original Hallmark drive that was in there. So this one is really neat. Uh, it came disassembled. I put it back together. I still need to adjust the pilots a little bit because as you can see, the front one is drooping just ever so slightly there. And the back one is really worse than this one. So what I'm going to have to do is come in with a cutting wheel and cut the frame down just a little bit to get those to fit on there. And then I'll be able to get the pilots to fit more properly onto the frame. But for $100, you can't go wrong with something like this, especially for brass. Some other new items from the train shows that came in. Uh, this is an Atlas... 60 foot double door auto parts box car and then down here i got three walther's 60 foot auto parts box cars i got the walther's 75th anniversary car and then two detroit toledo and ironton ones that came in a two pack so really nice cars and really glad i got these for the deal that i did one other item i found at a train show was this row house it's a, basically a copy of the ones that i've already put up but I went ahead and put it here on the end of the row here, and it looks pretty nice. So that's another house to put on the layout, and it's really cool. This Walther's Dynamometer car is also new. I found this at the TCA show that I went to with Logan, so that's really cool. I also found this Duluth South Shore and Atlantic box car. This one's made by Bowser, and that's really cool. I really like that. Got a good deal on that one, just like all the other cars I picked up at the TCA show. And the last train show item I got was this Walther's Florida East Coast Auto Rack. So, nothing too special about it. I paid 20 bucks for it, which is a decent enough deal for the car. So, yeah, lots of train show finds. So, something that came in new from the eBay side is this Rocky Mountaineer set. 
Uh, this is an Atherin ready to run GP40-2 and a Rapido Trains Inc. Gold Leaf Dome Car. And these are really cool. Uh, the only way you could get these was by actually riding the Rocky Mountaineer and purchasing them on the train or uh, buying them from their headquarters, I believe in Kamloops. So these are pretty rare. And it's going to be... You know, one of my goals is to kind of have the Rocky Mountaineer on the layout, but that's going to be an expensive undertaking and one that's going to take a long, long time to do because the Red Leaf coaches that they also did in the same paint scheme are hard to find. The Gold Leaf cars are always very expensive whenever you do find them, and so are the Jeep 40s. So at least I've got these for now, but these are very rare items and yeah definitely happy to have them in my collection they weren't cheap but i am happy to have them quick look at some of the details on the gold leaf car it's got a full interior it's got led lighting it's got the back deck back here just like the prototype so that's really cool yeah really nice car from rapido so also on the Atherin side, this is an Atherin Genesis P42DC painted up for Via Rail. Uh, I've had several Via F40s for the, for the longest time, but I haven't had a P42, and I needed to remedy that when the new run came out. So these are really nice. Uh, this one's just straight DC. I'm going to get ESU put in it eventually, but detail-wise, it is super nice. It's got the dual horns. It's got the xenon light on the nose. It's just, it's a really nice model, and I'm really happy to have it. A couple new vehicles that came in for the layout. I got this Caterpillar front loader and a Megabus. This is pretty neat right here. I'm real happy to have this thing. I remember riding Megabus back in 2014 to go to Memphis, Tennessee for the 100th anniversary of Central Station. And you can find that video way back in my channel somewhere. But, uh, yeah. Really nice die-cast vehicles to have for the layout. I also got something for the in-scale side of my collection. This is a Amtrak P42 Inner City set from Kato. I actually, believe it or not, found this at a thrift store and uh, paid only $40 for it. So I basically stole this. And it's really it's a really nice set. It's got the two AM fleets and a view liner, and then the P42 number 150. So yeah, really nice set, and it still runs. It's a bonus on that one. Something that just came back in recently was my uh, Canadian Pacific Business Train FP9A from Rapido. Uh, I had my friend Logan put ESU lock sound in this thing, and it is really nice now. Let me fire it up here. It sounds pretty good. I really like it. And typical Rapido, it runs smooth as silk. So yeah, it's running pretty good now. And with Rapido announcing more Royal Canadian Pacific cars coming out, that's going to be a great addition to help build up my CP business train. So that's everything new on the layout as far as rolling stock and locomotives. Let's go ahead and look at some of the upgrades I've been doing to the DCC system. So as you recall, you may recall, my DCC system was sitting here on the table. So it has now been moved down to right there on this little uh, food tray table. So because of that, I am now able to expand the tracks at the grain elevator, which I have not done yet. The cars are just sitting here loosely right now, waiting for the track to go into place. So when that does happen, I will be able to expand the track all the way down to the curve and get my full grain train into the uh, two spurs here, which that'll be really nice. I won't have to keep the cars in boxes anymore. But let's go ahead and look down here and take a look at what I've done upgrade-wise to the DCC system. 
So down here on the lower level with this table here, I've moved my DCS-52 right here, and it's, this is where it's going to sit now. I've also moved my programming track, and then I've installed two new modules right here. I've installed the UR93 and the LNY. So both of these modules allow me to run throttles as well as Y throttle on my phone. So I can run the little train however I want to now. So I can still run it with the DCS-52, but it's going to be a lot more convenient using throttles. And I went ahead, I've had this throttle for a long time. I also picked up a DT400R off of eBay just to have an extra throttle. And uh, something else up here, I got a second universal throttle pocket to uh, hold that one in, so that's good. And finally, I ran Loconet cable under the layout to this UP7 panel right here. So I'm able to run the trains, like I said, with Y throttle as well as rig conventional throttles. So that's really been helpful as far as running trains down here now. One other thing I did was I zip tied my little power strip here that everything's running to to one of the legs of the tables. So that got it off the floor. So that was pretty nice. So yeah, some much needed upgrades to my system. And it will really help once the national convention comes to town in 2026. Because, and I'm going to break this news here right now, I've just joined the National Model Railroad Association, and my layout is going to be featured on a tour of area layouts during the convention in 2026 when it comes to Chattanooga. So, I wanted to upgrade the DCC system just to be sure I had the use of throttles, so that way I wasn't going to be hovering over this system the entire time that that convention is going on, and when I'm running the layout in general. So... Got that done. That's a big check mark off the list. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to doing that. So, I wanted to get the layout as done as I can before that happens. So, let's see if I can make that happen. So, moving on to scenery work, uh, I got a static grass applicator for my birthday this year and, uh, have been using it extensively over here on this corner of the layout. Uh, this is just the uh, four millimeter grass, so it's not terribly high right now, but it looks pretty good, all things considered. The only problem is, after I got to here, the grass applicator tore up, so it is on its way back for a refund, and they're supposed to be sending a new one out, so we shall see what happens with that. But yeah, I'm in love with static grass now. This is really cool. And I'm looking forward to doing more of it on the layout and moving away from the tufts that I've done in the past. So if you watched the February layout update, you would have seen that I was working on this lake right here. And I've done a lot of work on this lake since that update. Uh, I've added a few layers, a few more layers of resin to it, so it's gotten up off the uh, bottom, finally. And I've gone ahead and painted it black with a mixture of this dark blue. And I, I think the color is just about where I want it. So I'm going to add one more layer of resin in here to seal it in. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. And then I also got this fishing dock off of eBay. And then these boats my mom found on Timu, so she gave them to me and I put them here. But they look good. Uh, it's just the right size fishing dock for the layout. And it really adds a lot to the scene. So there's a few uh, areas where the blue paint went up against the brown paint that I put on there. So I'm going to go in with a small brush and fix that before I add that final layer of resin in there. But for being my first lake, it is coming along really well. I'm very happy with this. And it's adding so much to the layout. So... Yeah, don't really have much else to say. It's just, it looks good. So there you go, guys. That's everything for March of 2024. As you can see, there's been a lot of new stuff come in, which is always nice. And there's been a lot of work done on the layout, which is very cool. So as I said, I'm very motivated now to 
get as much work as I can done on the layout before the 2026 National Convention. So, I know I got two years, but, you know, I feel like I'm on a time crunch, which I know is not really the case. But at the same time, it's motivating me to get stuff done. So, there's that. But, yeah... Expect things to slow down, though, here in the next month or so, because I got pre-orders to worry about, so I can't really be spending too much money on frivolous things. I've got a couple more things I'm trying to get my hands on, but you'll see those next month, hopefully. And uh, my car, unfortunately, was totaled out the other day, so I uh, got rear-ended in front of the house uh, back in November, was able to get it into the shop in February due to them having, I guess, so much work to do. And when it did get in the shop, it, they told me that it was totaled. So, yeah, that sucks. So now I'm going to have to buy a new car, and that's really going to cut into my model train funds. So, yeah. Who said adulting was fun? One star. Don't recommend. <laughs> but... Anyways, expect stuff to slow down. There won't be as much stuff coming in. But I do hope to continue working on the layout at a steady pace over the next few months. Got to get that static grass applicator fixed and replaced. And once the new one comes in, I should be able to start putting down more static grass in a more widespread area. And, uh... Yeah, that's basically all I got for you. There's not really too much else to talk about. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and thank you for watching to the end of the video if you did that. So, that's awesome. And until next time, guys, I will see you guys down the road in the next video. This is Ravenhawk6910, signing off.